watched my previous video, you might have noticed me mentioning that I wasn't going to do a breakdown for a long time. But after the first quarter of that Raptors game is pretty necessary. So the first thing I wanted to do was basically look at over some of the play-by-plays -play from the previous games. You see I got it open right now. And I'm not sure whether or not, as of this point recording, I'm not sure if I'm going to include this or not. But I'm just going to go ahead and do it right now. And uh, if it gets in the video, it makes it in the video. If not, if it doesn't. But one of the things that I think I need to point out was um, if you look at the Mavericks game, if you can see up here, where it, you can see that uh, Dallas scored 21 in the first, Lakers 38, versus the rest of the games um, where they kind of struggled. That's been something that if you watch Luke Wall and he's mentioned, he's mentioned the fact that sometimes they'll do way better on defense than what they do. At, at times, they could do better. Because if you look at the Raptors game right here, it's 42-17 in the first. That's a huge uh, takeaway from that game because if you look at the rest, you're looking at 32, 29, 31, uh, 30, uh, 27, 20. So pretty much they won every other quarter besides the first where they just got totally destroyed. But one of the things that I wanted to mention uh, specifically was if you do look back at the Mavericks game, um, a lot of people looked at Lonzo Ball's defense against Dennis Smith Jr. that game and mentioned that he kind of shut him down, but they're missing the they're missing something here that you know that you, it kind of takes a basketball mind to see, and that's that um, Dennis Smith Jr. is not a passer, he's not a shooter. the The key to that game was DeAndre Jordan versus um, JaVale McGee, and if you go back to the the Raptors game, that gets exposed because it's Serge Ibaka versus JaVale McGee. And if you look at the Timberwolves game, even you kind of saw a precursor to that in um, Carl Anthony Towns versus JaVale McGee. And um, what I mean by this is that during during the Mavericks game, if Dennis Smith Jr. beat um, Lonzo Ball off the dribble, if he beat him off a screen or anything, and he went to the paint, JaVale McGee was there because DeAndre Jordan's not a threat from mid-range. He's not a threat from three. So anywhere outside of the paint, DeAndre Jordan is, gets pretty much ignored. And given that uh, Dennis Smith Jr. is not going to hit, you know, crazy fadeaway jumpers, mid-range jumpers, pull-ups, or anything like that at a high rate, and he's also not going to be like an incredible passer where he's just going to throw the ball up like, you know, Chris Paul used to do with DeAndre Jordan, just throw the ball up. Um, always had a nice angle and always got him a good oop or uh, finish near the rim every time that he could collapse the defense in. That didn't happen that game. And that's why you'll notice that the Mavericks game kind of as an outlier I mean, Lonzo Ball played well that game, but they were pretty much up the entire game up until the end where they probably could have lost if there was maybe 10 more seconds on the clock. But the entire game they pretty much controlled, and that was more of a product of matchups, not necessarily a product of certain players playing well or the Lakers, you know, getting things together or whatever. Um, because in the Raptors game, they got exposed. Um, like I mentioned in the Timberwolves game, um, you notice the same thing with Derrick Rose as you notice with Dennis Smith Jr. going towards the basket. That's how I already knew, like after the Mavericks game, where I mean, where people was kind of saying this. I already knew what happened because I saw the same thing happen to Derrick Rose. Um, but the difference with um the Timberwolves was that Carl Anthony Towns actually, he actually um did some things that DeAndre Jordan didn't do, which kind of exposed, like like I said, um with Javel McGee, which was. A, he offensive rebounded well. They got killed in the offensive glass because of Joe Phil McGee being out of position trying to help. Um, and also, towards the same end, Javel McGee being out of position, Carl Anthony Towns got some big threes because of that. That didn't happen in the um, Mavericks game, obviously, because um, DeAndre Jordan's not shooting threes and he didn't offensive rebound very well that game. Um, and if you look at the Raptors game, Serge Ibaka was the one who led the um the surge at the beginning of the game. I mean, I guess no pun intended. But um uh, yeah, I mean Ibaka killed him in the first and obviously, you know, he was playing the five this game versus JaVel McGee. JaVel McGee couldn't float off and help Lonzo Ball, or he did, and they got killed because of it. Um Javel, I mean Serge Ibaka hit some threes, he hit some um open mid range shots in the paint sometimes and you saw the result of what I mentioned prior to, or I guess post Mavericks game. It just popped up here really big. And I mean, 
as big as you could possibly imagine in the first quarter of that game. Okay. I want to take a look at the box score really quickly. Um, as you can notice, um, the top left, there's the 42 to 17. But as you can notice also, we got 29 to 32, 30 to 31, and 20 to uh, 27. So they pretty much won every quarter. So this, so that's why I'm not going to cover the second, third, and fourth quarters of this game. I'm just going to cover the first because the game was pretty much lost in the first. Um, if they would have done anything better in the first, um, if they would have scored more points, or if they would have... Um, I mean, like I said, if they would have, if they would have played better defense, obviously, because obviously defense was the issue. You can get away with scoring 17. If the other team scores maybe like 25, um, even 30. But for four, 42, I mean, there's no way you're getting getting away with that. And um, some of the things that I kind of want to take away from this is if you look at um, some of the stats, don't really tell you the full picture here. Because you could look at Lonzo Ball stats and see five for seven, Two for uh, three from the three point line, nine rebounds, four assists, two steals, even, and 12 points, and say, oh, well, he, he played exceptionally well. You can see his plus minus is only negative one. Um, but, I mean, that's far from the case that he played well in this game. But moving on to the breakdown, um, what you're going to see here is uh, Lonzo Ball's defense. Um, the people saying that he's a, he's a good defender, what you're going to see here is. Um, Kyle Lowry basically just taking baseline when, as you can see, there's no help. Um, Serge Ibaka is out um, top, so JaVale McGee's out top gardening. There's no baseline help. You have to force the guy away from the baseline if we're here. And as you can see, Kyle Lowry just basically just manhandles, manhandles him um, down to the baseline. And at this point, Kyle Lowry got anything that he wants. I mean, he could pull up. He could, might be able to draw a foul, shoot in a layup. He could probably just overpower him and just get the ball in but as you can see with um Brandon Ingram here this is kind of his fault at this point because he's not like basically in line where the referee is you can see it's the passing lane and Brandon Ingram's not cutting that off at all I mean he he, he could have kind of got distracted from Kyle Kuzma falling down here but he's out of position but th this all starts from Lonzo Ball allowing that amount of penetration on the baseline um obviously at that point LeBron has to uh be has to look out for this corner guy shoot, being able to shoot a three. And Ingram has to scoot over, which he doesn't. And that leads to Danny Green splashing this, this three. And that starts him out um, uh, for Toronto. Um, you can't have that. Next play. And I've been saying this all year. If you cover my other big breakdowns, Lonzo Ball is just weak around the screens. Look, I mean, you got to get around that screen fast. You got to have a sense of urgency around that screen. And, I mean, the, the amount of space right here, is so much that Kyle Lowry is so comfortable. He has all this. I mean, if you come, if you're in the NBA and you come around a screen with that much space to drive, um, JaVale McGee's so far off of him at this point that you know he could pull up, but he just he just pulls out, pivots back, and uh, gets Serge Ibaka open, and that gets Serge going for the rest of the game. As you know, he had over 20 points in the first if you watched it. Next play here. Lonzo Ball defending again. Um, again, right there. Boom. Open open the floodgates for him. Uh, part of the Red Sea, basically. And we're going to get another jumper. I mean, you got to play better defense. You got to keep the keep um, I'm out of the lane. If you watch the post game, you'll even uh, notice that uh, Luke Walton, one of the things that they mentioned they wanted to do was keep uh, Kyle Lowry from penetrating like that. And they obviously didn't do it. Here, um, what you're going to see is uh, if you could, if you paid attention, um, I can go back a little bit. Here, um, basically, what happens is you'll see Lonzo Ball right here point Kyle Kuzma to the baseline. When this should, Lonzo Ball here has to has to cut off the baseline himself if that's what he wants to do here, because when Kyle Kuzma goes over, you're going to see. It's basically a wide open driving lane, and there's no one under the basket to help, uh, m help middle. If, obviously, if he would have forced them to the middle, you could see Javale McGee's there. But given that he pointed Kyle Kuzma out, now Javale McGee's not in a good spot to help, and you, you're going to get the ball in, and they're going to kick it back out. Javale McGee collapsed, out of position, and you got the three from Ibaka. 
I mean, that's the type of places you just can't have. Then offensively, at this point, we we have no subs in the game, which um, at a certain point should, could be okay. But this is when you, you'll you notice that rotations become harder and harder when you're getting beat. I mean, you're basically going to have to keep them in the game for a long time. Um, here you want to notice, I mean, that's a pretty poor entry pass here. But here's the opportunity that they could have had to get the ball back out. You see Lonzo Ball here is basically wide open looking at him. I mean, why he's not jumping up and down and <laughs> jumping up with his hands up, up in the air saying, hey, you know, give me the ball for this three, give me the ball for this three. Is beyond me. Um, Kyle Kuzma even sets him a little flare right there. He's, st he's, I mean, he could be wide here. That's a catch and shoot three, um, drifting to your left um, for a shooter should be right where you want it. Instead of Ingram holds him to the ball, um, and right here even Kuzma needs to be over to the uh, left a little bit. Basically, um, not necessarily where the referee is, but he needs to be kind of dr drifting a little bit. Uh, left to give LeBron some space and then if LeBron has to drive and get um the defender to, to come in a little bit I mean that's just a little bit better spacing right here he's obviously playing to get the ball in a pass which again could have happened and maybe Lonzo Ball could have swung back around and maybe he could have swing it back around um to get a better shot but here I think you know even right there we could have a pass from LeBron but he holds on to it and he's going to take the ball here. And you want to notice, look, right here. Look at Lonzo Ball. The shot's going to be missed. They're going to get the rebound. But look at Lonzo Ball watching the ball. Watch Kyle, Low Kyle Lowry. Watch how Logan takes uh, takes him in a wreck. I mean, Kyle Lowry already getting the ball. And Lonzo Ball just at this point decides that, you know, I need to leak out. He needed to leak out a while ago. Stop worrying about getting that offensive rebound or what's happening underneath the basket and worry about stopping the ball you're the point guard you have to stop the ball going back and transition and you're going to see that he basically i mean he never catches kyle lowry back up the, and this that's another basket i mean people were praising lonzo ball's defense but as you can see um in this game he was a huge part of the issue again here um this is an offensive play but what you're going to notice here is this this is one of the problems that I think Lonzo Ball has with that mid-range game because so much space was given on this just like it was given to Lowry. But you can see how Lowry attacked versus how Lonzo attacked. I mean, this is a very early pass. He didn't even try to stretch him for maybe to get an open mid-range uh, by the logo right there, which is a pretty close shot. I mean, it's, it's even in bank territory. I mean, you would have stretched. Um, if uh, you could have stretched the buck out even more, you could have gave even more space for McGee to go in the drive. And um, what you're going to notice here also is um, Ingram's wide open in the corner and McGee just totally misses him. I mean, at this point, uh, if he would have been looking to pass, even if he looked to pass it back to Lonzo, if Lonzo could have sold Lowry, but instead he goes up for it. I mean, I don't know if he's fouled or not, but still, you can't have that. And look at Lonzo Ball. Again, this is the exact same thing that just happened. He's... uh. I mean, he just fell asleep under the basket. I mean, Lowry's there. I mean, for a second, maybe you thought you could have got the offensive rebound, but as soon as you realize that the ball bounced back out, you need to be out. Instead, Kyle Lowry is basically all the way to the three-point line before um, Alonzo Ball even passes the um, half court. And we'll get a wide-open shot. I mean, that that's terrible. And people say in Lonzo Ball, you know, well, the reason why they have him on a team is because of his shooting and his defense, and it's obviously not the case. That's obviously not the case that those are strong points to his game. Um, the shooting, I'm not going to discuss here, but obviously it's just the defense. But as you can see again, bang, so much space off that screen. Um, and you're going to see um, JaVel McGee have to come help again. And then they swing it back around, and then we're wide again. Um, I mean, LeBron probably could have hedged a little bit to maybe help him out. But still, that started from that penetration there, which they obviously was something that they knew that they had to prevent before the game. And it just didn't happen. At this point, we're 626 uh, left in the first. And um, they still got the same unit out here, which at this point, I think as a coach, this is one of the reasons why Luke Walton might be on hot seat. You probably should have done something 
to get some guys in there who's going to share the ball a little bit more, maybe uh, look for some of those open threes. I mean, like I said, if Ingram was on the bench, I mean, the, the substitution I'd probably been looking to make was Ingram for um, Ingram for James and uh, Stevenson or um, Rondo for um, Lonzo Ball, uh, probably Stevenson, but um, it could have even been Rondo. And then after that, you could have looked at uh, maybe getting um, – Dropping uh, Ingram down to the power forward, even and uh, throwing a uh, three guard um, lineup with uh, Rondo back in. You had three guards because Hart would have been in. Yes, that's what I meant. But you're going to see here again on this screen again. I mean, he ends up fouling him here. I don't know if that was a foul or not. It could have been a cheap call. But um, at that point, it's like every time <laughs> around these screens, he's just showing that he's not strong enough around him. And this is the NBA where, I mean, pretty much everybody's taking after the Warriors, setting all these screens, moving screens and stuff like that. And you got to be able to get around those. Um, if they're not going to switch everything, which is not always going to be a case, you're going to see here again, that's probably a moving screen there. Um, but he doesn't make contact with him. Uh, he's way too wide on this. And you're going to get Serge Ibaka wide, wide open. And I think that might even be an and one. I mean, this is play after play after play after play after play. Six minutes left. Um, so you're well within uh, on basically halfway point, and there's still no substitutions on offense. or I mean, for the Lakers in general, offense or defense, substitutions. Obviously, you can see they're playing bad on both ends. Eight points, already gave up 25. And again here, I mean, you saw Alonzo Ball again, I mean, wide. Um, if they would have swung at the Alonzo Ball, you could also see Ingram. There was no one there in the corner. So, I mean, Kuzma had two guys when he, he got him shoot. At, at this point, you would have think that um, Luke Walton, during one of his timeouts, would have just said, hey, guys, um, you got to get this together. You got to share the ball. We need to get up shots. We need to get up open threes. We need to get open looks. We're not getting any very many open looks, and you're going to shoot with two guys on you right there. As you can see this one again, watch Lonzo Ball's hesitation. He tips the ball and he basically just expects LeBron to get it. And then you're going to see him like throw his hands up, but wide open coming down the court is uh, the Raptors and um, Kyle Lowry. And um, they don't score off of it right away, but you'll notice right there, they get it back to Serge Ibaka. And this is going to be the first point that they actually make a substitution. I mean, it's 523, and as you can see, they just now put Rondo in, in the game. I mean, that's the reason why Luke Walton's on the hot seat. I mean, the type of rotation. I mean, when you're already getting killed, uh, obviously this, this at this point at least 15, but you're getting killed. And the exact same thing I mentioned last game was he put Rondo, and I think Hart is in the game at this point, but... Kuzma's still in the game, been in the game the entire game. LeBron's still in the game, been in the game the entire game. And McGee, your big, is in the game, been in the game the entire game. I mean, none of them are playing particularly well. As you can see, Kuzma, as I just mentioned, shot with two guys on him, LeBron. Um, he missed some open guys. And McGee has been kind of late when his rotation is trying to help. He hasn't really done anything. So you got all these guys who, I mean, there's no reason really to keep them on the floor other than the fact that they're starters. But here again, you're going to see Kyle Lowry come off and hit one on Rondo. I mean, at that point, it's just, I mean, he's so hot. I mean, the team's doing so well. I mean, he has no hesitation because, I mean, if, if he missed a shot, so what? There's no pressure in that situation. And it'll come up again um, right here. And then we'll turn the ball over. And we're coming right back. So, I mean, Rondo, when he got in the game, it's not like he played any better right away. Um, so, I can't really say necessarily if it would have been different if he started. But, I mean, definitely the way Lonzo Ball was playing, I think anybody probably could have played better than how he was just giving them anything that they wanted on offense. Here, actually, you can see. They played actually better right here. At, at this point, you're at 431, and you just now got Stevenson in the game, Rondo in the game, and I think uh, Hart in the game. And, I mean, that was a good box out there to me. Right there, that, that, 
I mean, if that's not over the back, I'm not sure what is. And that's what I'm just talking about. Stevenson at this point not getting any foul calls because it's upsetting to me. Um, how is that not over the back? I mean, I don't understand that. He doesn't get anything. And you're going to see here again when Stevenson gets the ball. And this is one of the things I'm talking about as well. Is you can see how Stevenson, when he plays point, can break down the um, the D way better than LeBron. And this is why I'm, I'm saying there's a problem with the rotations too. Because if you can get LeBron out of the game, maybe for Ingram, and then Stevenson can go play the point, or Rondo could go play the point, both of whom play uh, the point better than LeBron, you get things like this. But watch watch how there's no call on this. I want, I want you to watch. Uh, watch at 11 second uh, on the shot clock mark. 14 right now. Watch. Oh, wait. This is a different play. Yeah, that was a different play. Next play. This is when Stevenson gives up the J. Yeah. That was a bad play. Terrible. But like I said, he's already filling it at that point. He already hit the one on Rondo. I mean, his hands down, man down. But you'd expect him to uh, have uh, gotten a hand up on that. But. You know, maybe he was just, wasn't expecting to pull up like that. But yeah, here's the one. Watch that 11, the, um, the 11 second mark. Ibaka is guarding Kuzma. Watch Kuzma. He's out. Ibaka is nowhere near Kuzma at this point. 11, 10, still nowhere near him. 9, 8. Where's the whistle? Where's the whistle for a three second violation? And then watch this right here. Stevenson goes up, like I said. He's not getting a foul call. Ibaka goes right into him, right, right a forearm when a pass, a forearm right into his side. It's obviously contact. He obviously wasn't going straight up. But you look seven. He, look, Kuz, or, um, Kuzma's at now. Ibaka is nowhere near trying to guard him. This is six, five, four. We're at four seconds. Ibaka's still yet to guard. Uh, it's been in the paint this entire time and he's still yet to guard Kuzma and then you're going to get this uh, tough shot from Lance at this point a 2.3 from 11 he's just now guarding Kuzma outside the paint I mean that's, that's why I'm talking about Lance just doesn't get these calls because it was, it was his ball handling and Ibaka worried about him getting to the basket that kept Ibaka in the paint but there's no call for three second violation he should have been shooting a technical free throw and he should have gotten the ball back but it's just and then we'll get right here. Um, Kuzma, this is the first time Kuzma comes out of the game. That's why I have this part. Kuzma's just at 221 in the first coming out of the game. At this point, he should probably be subbing back in the game if they needed him for a matchup issue. But, I mean, you got to get your rotation. This is a regular season. This isn't the playoffs where you have to run guys for the entire first. Obviously, you know this is kind of a, a game that might even be a throwaway. You already played This is a, a second of a back-to-back. -back. Get your guys out. Uh, earlier so you could have that rotational flexibility at this point um this is what i'm talking about with lance playing the point because you could look he he gets this guy shook around this uh this look how much space he gets right here you know they don't collapse in he has a drive if he, if, maybe if he wants it um someone could probably cut but he hits this uh mid-range that's the first time they scored i mean since basically the beginning of the game And, um, you know, this might be the second time they score right here. I mean, they're already this far into the first, and they're just now scoring buckets again. I mean, it's terrible. The game's, the game's basically over at this point because they didn't come back from this. But you're looking at, you got this um, guard lineup in there when you're struggling with the big all night. Because you're again because of your rotations. I mean, you can't have a small forward in there because Ingram is your small forward. He's starting at... Um, Starting with LeBron, who's also your small forward. That's what I'm talking about, Luke being on a hot seat in the rotations. I mean, this is basically just illustrated my point that I tried to make in a brief the other day. And again, what I'm talking about with Stevenson, he comes over, he's playing defense, and they're going to get a foul on that. I mean, what's the foul for? I mean, he was in a restricted area. He didn't, the, guard, the guy didn't charge through him. They're not calling a block of charts there. I mean, he just went straight up on him and initiated the contact and him call a foul there. I mean, this doesn't make any sense. And then there's our uh, our other bucket to end the first. But, yeah, as I mentioned, um, just to take away the things that need to be adjusted is, I mean, it, it's tremendous. Um, and it, 
this is just one of those games people you could say that it's just one of those games where you came off a of back this is going to be the second game of a back to back you just played a tough game against portland got a win toronto is the best team in the east coming 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 in but they, they don't have quite Leonard. you're at home but still it's what he one of those games they just played so hot at the beginning with Serge Ibaka. that was Serge Ibaka, i think's career high uh that he was two points away from setting the uh record for points in a quarter that uh Kyle Lowry had i think was 22 Ibaka had 20 so yes they played just tremendously they played well beyond what maybe people would expect them to play but Still, the little things that you're doing wrong uh, with Lonzo Ball allowing that penetration and getting those kicks, uh, having to get help from McGee, like basically almost every other play, you can't have that. Um, you got to put Rondo in the game earlier, maybe. But that's just a problem, like I mentioned earlier, with them having Rondo and Lonzo on the, t- the team. Because yes, you want to let Rondo, I mean, Lonzo play through his mistakes. But at the same time, I mean, you got to have a situation where um, you could have a person in that could actually win you games. And that's, I mean, that's that's the issue with the team right now. And then, like I said, with starting um, Ingram, I can't repeat this enough. With starting Ingram and Kuzma and LeBron, that's three forwards, zero forwards in the rotation at that point. And then you notice how late they took, I mean, they're basically in playoff mode during the earlier parts of the regular season with not playing guys. During the regular seasons where you could experiment with lineups, but the, the way he's experimenting with lineups doesn't make any sense whatsoever. You don't experiment by putting four or five yards out on the floor at the same time. You experiment by playing players that maybe people think that maybe they shouldn't play because they don't, you don't know how good they are, but they could surprise you. That's the experiments you have, but you play people at the right positions, um, or at least if they're a guard, maybe you could experiment by putting someone at point guard but obviously, when you know you got stuff that works, like you know that Lance Stevens can produce a point guard, please put him at backup point guard. He won you two games at backup point guard. Please don't let LeBron run point the entire game when he needs to be playing off ball and showing that he can play well off ball and give you give you something off ball. But you put him on ball and you have problems. I mean, you you can't like you know try to post up Ingram all the time as your only offense. Um, I mean, you have to find something else. I mean, when Lonzo Ball. That's one of the, another issue with Lonzo Ball, like I said, is that his shooting is a problem, not because he can't shoot threes. He's shooting threes at a high, high, high rate, high percentage, but he can't shoot mid-range. Uh, he's hesitant to go and, and get fouled near the rim because he can't shoot free throws. He can't, I mean, he may be able to finish around the basket well. I mean, we haven't seen him finish like, you know, like a Kyrie or like Rondo's been doing or like a, like a Curry. I mean, I haven't seen that. I'm not saying he can't do it. But we haven't seen it. So when you have that problem on offense where you have a guy who basically just wants to pass or shoot open threes or shoot open layups, I mean, that leaves so much of a gap you, when you could have, like, basically Stevenson there who could be a scorer, Ronzo who could be, a, like, a total distributor, um, and you got those people on your bench, and they're playing better defense at some points in time. Maybe not this game, but at least in previous games, I mean, you just can't have that. 